Welcome to the clubhouse. Hey, hello, Team 337. It's been a while. Simon Lee here, LTTV, and we're back for yet another race review. I know it's been a while, so sorry about the uh, the time that it's taken to put together another one of these, but this is a very special one. I don't want to spoil anything just yet. So um, basically we're looking at, this goes all the way back to May 27th of 2023, so over a year ago. So um, yeah, one from the archives, uh, the Gula Windsurfer Classic. This is uh, a day one race two, and it was a very light wind, five to seven knots. Uh, and I can tell you, um, thanks to our friends Water Speed, the official speed app of LTTV, that uh, my maximum board speed during this race was five knots, and my maximum heart rate was 170 BPM. So up there. Uh, with a bit of pumping, as you'll see. Um, but um, before we start racing, I would like to introduce a very special guest who's joining us today all the way from New South Wales. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Paul Van Bellen. Hey. hey! How are you, mate? Hey, Paul. Good, thank you. Good. I'm, I'm really impressed with this whole intro. You know, I, I came on this thing thinking, oh, yeah, just a a casual little chat which we're having but then i've come on and i feel like i'm on a tv station this is a That's way better setup than the one i do with ben ah so thank you yeah do all this <laughs> <laughs> yeah well this is the uh the uh, lt tv clubhouse what do you think everyone this is uh the first time that we're in the clubhouse live so yeah it's amazing Love no it. no what What's the, you got your trophies in the background? Are they all real trophies? or you I do. Um, some are computer generated, but very well spotted, Paul. You'll see <laughs> this right here. This is yeah. the Brighton and Seacliff Yacht Club Consistency Trophy. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Your attention to detail is uh, amazing. <laughs> uh, Two-time <laughs> winner of the, of the uh, Consistency Trophy now, and it sits proudly back there. There is also the Fleet Championship Trophy as well, which I don't have in digital form yet. But uh, when I do, it's going back there. But, yeah, welcome to the clubhouse, everyone. And this may be common knowledge to all your listeners, but is there a significance to the 337? 337 is my sale number, and it is my surname, Lee, upside down. Uh, there you go. Goodness, that's cool! And you were able to get the number? Was it? Did somebody have the number, or was it free when you registered? Um, it's it's murky, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's on my sale, and it's my brand. So three three seven. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, I found out today. I might, I better not say too much because someone might steal it from me. But um, yeah. Anyway. Moving along. Team 337, that's my supporters and my viewers, and uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, hey, Paul, now I've got you down here as an LT cadet uh, because you do own uh, an LT, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was um, I was very generous, generously given one uh, during the LT Worlds in Perth because I did a bit of filming down there and there was a bit of a deal where I got a contra deal for a board for the filming and I live in Geraldton now, and I'm actually not in Geraldton right now. I'm visiting family in, in um, Sydney. But um, uh, yeah, I took it back to Geraldton, and I think, I could be wrong, I think I'm the only person in Geraldton that's actually got one um, because I haven't seen anyone else out in the water with one. Uh, and I live near the water. I've taken it out quite a few times now, just out into the ocean and the first time I used it, I was actually quite surprised how um, different and, and actually, I mean, it, look, it's easy to obviously get on the board and just sail, but but to actually get to the, you know, to sail, it's easy enough. But if you want to get the maximum out of it, that's really where the skill was. I, I, I was actually quite surprised how 
tricky that was to get the most out of it. Um, because, you know, the time, like when I first went out, I think it was about 20 knots. And then you quickly realize how the board rails up, you know, quite easily. And I had the center board down. I was like, oh, this thing's railing up too much. Then you put the center board a bit, you know, I was like, oh, there's all these things. Where's the mast track is and this and that. And, um, so, but no, it's also, I, I love just being able to go out in any knots. I think that's the biggest thing with it. Five knots, ten knots, you can go out because I usually just go on short boards. So I'm always needing at least 17, 18 knots. So it is nice to be able to go out in any conditions. In fact, I think I actually like it when it's light winds because then it's less chop and you can relax a bit. You know, it does get a bit intense, doesn't it? It's 20 knots plus. Like yeah, it, more, it can do. Definitely. On. Yeah. That's my idea. With it. <laughs> cool. Oh, you're going to love this race ball. It's very light. Uh, yeah, so you could, and uh, have you had any, are you interested in racing the LT? Look, I think I am. Um, it would be awesome if there was a race happening in Geraldton because I would definitely, um, participate, but, um, yeah, I think I'm, I guess I'm going to have to get down to Perth, you know, for, for a race and I probably need to just learn a few more details like, um, yeah, like when I got given the board, I was also given the, um, you know, on the where the center board goes, you can um, tape it up and, you yeah. know, all those little details and things like that, which I'm a little bit sort of unsure of the best things to do there. And, and the rigging of the sail, I'm not really, under, like I don't, I'm sure when I'm rigging the sail, I'm not rigging it as good as it could be. I just downhaul the thing and I'm looking at the sail going, that looks okay, I guess. But I'm sure if someone knows what they're doing, they'll look at it and go, oh, you should do this or do that. Yeah, it's just those things. Sure. Hopefully you get some yeah. pointers today from this little chat. Yeah. Um, yeah and yeah. Oh, tell me a little bit more about Wave Rally World Championships. Yeah, it's a big name, definitely a big name. And uh, I've, I've certainly um, set a, um, a precedent for a name like that, so I'm going to have to sort of deliver. But, uh, yeah, look, uh, what happened was I think it was last year or – Maybe even earlier than that, I remember going, you know, I sailed down at Coronation Beach a lot and it's a perfect arena. You know, you've got the flat bay and then you've got the waves that break on the outside and you've got all these people burning in and out and jumping through the waves. And I thought, oh, this would be awesome to see a race through here. Um, and then I started thinking, well, you know, it'd be cool to have a race, but if you make it just for slalom gear, you know, most people around here don't have any of that. So then I thought it'd be fun to have an event where you could just use your wave gear because that's what everyone actually uses. Anyway, cut a long story short, I think it was in, I don't know, maybe January, December, January, just gone by. I basically decided, all right, I'm doing it because I mean, I've got the time and if I don't do it, you know, like it's easy to sit there and think, oh, I'll be good if it happens. But of course, no one does. And I thought, okay, I just got to do it. And, uh, yeah, started the process of organizing it, but it was, I was, um, I had a vision in my head of how I thought it could look. I never organized an event before. So when I decided I was going to start, you know, obviously I'm sitting at my desk at home. I go, right, well, what do I, what do you do? Well, you know, obviously I started the process. I made a concept video, which is the first thing, so at least get some people inspired. Then I started contacting, um, windsurf wa and you know, anyway, one thing led to another and the more i got into it the more i realized there's a lot i don't like th there was a lot of aspects to this that i didn't know and in fact um i think most people who go to a windsurf event have no idea how much is involved like there's so <laughs> many um, documents and i mean it's just you know and also starting this in from scratch you know developing logos um, designs, websites, Facebook pages, Instagrams, you know, talking to sponsors, writing out grants. Um, I mean, there's, there's actually a hell of a lot. Like there's so much organizing all the infrastructure of things, ambulance, jet skis, stages, PA systems, toilets, water, sunscreen, blah, blah. Incredible. I could go on, I could go on, but there's, there's a lot. Um, I will say this, that, um, I have been pleasantly surprised. I like to be transparent about it all because I think it's nice for people to come along for the journey. But when I started this, I thought um, I had a, an aim for a hundred entrants 
and a budget of I thought I have a budget of about twenty five thousand dollars. That's what I needed because I just did a basic summary of the things that you need. I was like, I need I need at least twenty five grand, you know, to do this. Well, as of today, you know, what are we, Thursday the fifteenth of August? Um, I've because I document every you know all the money going in and out. And right as of today, I've got a um, project. Well, I've, I've so far raised forty thousand um, dollars. Hey, and great job! Yeah, and that's yeah, and it's still six months to go. And I've only really been organized going hard in this organization for four months. So I mean, I don't want to get ahead of myself too much, but I. I think there's still another at least ten grand I could potentially raise, you know. So, Fantastic. yeah. So that ba basically what that means is I've been able to step it up a bit when it comes to the production of this um, event, and uh, I can do things that I didn't think I could do in the past. So, anyway, that's that's where it's at. And if anyone has any interest, you know, if you've got some at this stage, it is be wave gear. Unfortunately, it's not for LTs or anything because it's yeah. I mean, maybe in the future, but for now. If you've got some wave, uh, you know, gear, and you want to just join in, it's going to be super fun. And if for some reason the wind is light, which is a very real possibility, um, I'm purchasing twelve inflatable wind subs, which are essentially like looking almost like LTs, I guess. And um, you'll be racing on those. You just plug your sail into that, and everyone will just be doing heats on those things through the waves and. It'll just be fun. So whatever it's five knots or thirty-five knots, the idea is that an event will uh, will happen. So, Brilliant. Yeah. So thank you. Where, where yeah, can thanks. people find yeah. out more about it? Uh, well, there is there is a website developed at the moment, and it'll probably take me another month or so to get online. The, really, the best place right now is the Facebook page because I'm just updating all developments on there, and people can come along. So. If you just uh, look up Wave Rally, like search that on um, on Facebook, you'll find it, um, and that's really the best place at the moment. Registration will open around mid to late September, and basically the event is being um, auspiced. Auspiced, what's the word? Auspiced. Um, you know, but is is basically being um, supported by Windsurfing Western Australia as far as the back end registration is concerned because you know there's insurance um related issues things like that so the registration will open then and you'll actually buy your entries through their website but that'll all be linked throughout the wave rally website and obviously announced on the facebook page so um yeah if you if you're interested go on the facebook page and uh that's probably your best bet for now awesome yeah well, yeah thank cool, you, cool. thanks for giving me the opportunity to promote that because it's uh yeah, no, it'll be super cool to see people. I've had people from all over Australia said they're coming. I've had people from New Zealand. I've, I've had yeah, people, a few people from New Zealand are coming over. And obviously in Coronation and Summer, there's um, there's already people from all over the world there. So it'll actually be a really international event. Yeah, it'll be um, – so that that's cool. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, all the best. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Cool, mate. Are, you, are you ready to watch a, an LT race? Let's do it. All right. I'm, I'm counting on you to ask any questions as we go along. Yep. And okay. we're racing in Goola, which is uh, down near the, the mouth of the Murray River, actually, South Australia. So uh, flat water is, for a change. Is that That's where um, Storm Boy was filmed, wasn't it? Absolutely. I love that movie. Spot on. Yeah, cool. All right. Well, you're going to love yeah. this because here we are. Um, so I usually like to start these things sort of a minute before the start gun goes. So, um, just to take a quick look around. We've got some, uh, boards down below us. We've got quite a few at the boat end, as you can see, very light wind, uh, and sorry. about to. But sorry, can I just butt in? Because I yeah. am quite a novice when it comes to LC. So th these are all, all crew from South Australia, basically. They are all from South Australia uh, in this particular yep. regatta. Um, yep. But yeah, uh, we had we unfortunately because of the algae in the in the, the Murray River at the moment, we couldn't run this regatta this year. But uh, we had people fly over from WA, uh, mm. so that was really cool. But yeah, these are all kind of locals. There's thirty five odd boards there for this regatta. And, and how many regattas do you have in a season in South Australia? 
Sure. So we've got our state championships, obviously, uh, and um, this, the Gula uh, Windsurfer Classic. We're trying to add others to the program as well. We were going to be racing in the Clayton Bay Rat Race last year, but again, algae put an end to that, unfortunately. Uh, but we're, we're looking to build and add events as we go. So this is yeah. kind of just a really fun regatta and a chance for everyone to get away from the Brighton Seacliff Yacht Club and to, to do some racing on flat water too, which um, Brighton is, is in the ocean, so we do get quite a swell. Yep. So this is fun. So um, okay. I'll, I'll kick it off here uh, with a minute to go. Now, uh, this is 2117. Let me just pause it there. He's uh, He was the co-host on the last video, but he's he's trying a very tricky manoeuvre here coming in on port tack uh, with no right of way and then trying to essentially sail backwards, but um, it doesn't go too well for him. <laughs> <laughs> and, yep, there he goes. Is there is there many complaints with, uh, you know, like people protesting and things like that? Is it, or people pretty casual about it? People are pretty casual about it. I mean, for example, we've got uh, this person here also on Port Tack, um, just up here, running into a starboard tacker. So, you know, that, that would be um, a penalty, uh, I guess, as well. But it just depends. We're, we're, we're all 50% fun and 50% hard fair racing. You will see in a second, spoiler alert, um, I do get fouled on the start line and I, I call out the other board to do a penalty turn and, and he does. So it does happen. But, um, yeah, it, it's hard with windsurfers. We don't have a rudder. We don't really have a great amount of steerage, as you've just seen. Um, so, yeah, it's you, you give and take. It, it's, yeah. So, and just for anyone out there that may want to film their own adventure, is this a, a GoPro strapped to your head? Is it? So this is an Insta360 uh, camera. Uh, okay, yep. Uh, so that gives me the uh, benefit of I can zoom out, I can move around, I can focus on you know, different things that are going on around me. So. Oh, okay. And how is it mounted to you? Uh, it's in a. It's on a pole which is stuck into my backpack here. Oh, yeah. uh, and the okay. pole sort of deletes itself in the software, yep. which is pretty yep. cool. So it's like having a drone sort of flying over my shoulder, if you like. Mm. It's perfect but, um, for racing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll get into this. I may skip forward a little bit through this race just because it is very light winds and, you know, some very long tacks and that sort of thing. So I'll um, I'll just move through those bits as we come up to them. But uh, here we go. <laughs> yeah. So let me uh, just try and so turn. Pump is sort of my ignorance here because I haven't yeah. participated in LT race, but you can pump all the time or just at the start or what? No. So at the start, the first 30 seconds of the race, you can pump upwind. 30 seconds. Uh, yep, 30 seconds. And then after that, um, there's usually a hooter or in a regatta like this to let you know, okay, no more pumping upwind. From there, it is uh, unlimited pumping downwind, but you can't pump upwind. That's just to keep it yep. a little bit fairer. And, you know, we have a wide range of um, fitness levels and age uh, brackets in the fleets. So we don't want to make it so that those people that can pump the hardest will win, sort of thing. So yep. that's the reason for that. So here we go. There we are. So I'm about halfway down the line. People behind there and people in front. So we still haven't had the gun yet. And this, this so this is what I'm talking about here. So this person sort of not allowed to do that. Um, and there's the start gun. So I've Unfortunately, I've got a very bad start because of it. But so what did he do that wasn't allowed? He obviously came up inside of you. What was... That's right. So there's there's a rule where the windward boat, or yeah, we call it a boat, but the windward boat yeah. must keep clear. So he okay. was to windward of, of me. Yeah, that's it. So he, he needs to keep clear of me. And again, it's 
you know, it's just a steerage okay. issue. He, did, he didn't do it on purpose or anything like that, but uh, just, you know, he had too much speed and couldn't steer the board. So it just ended up like that. But um, unfortunately, it did ruin my start a little. But when that happens, um, you can exonerate yourself by doing a penalty turn, which he does. So all good there. So, yeah, as you can see, frustratingly low wind off the start and an early tack. The wind actually went very much to the left-hand side, so you can see we all tackling the port pretty quickly, which is unusual, but the wind had changed dramatically. So there we are. So I will. this is one of the bits where I will sort of skip forward, but basically what I'm trying to do now is just settle in and get as much speed as I can and just get the, the board moving. So forward a little. Yeah. And so I do a little, so the, little tack there. So the, so the first leg is a is an upwind. First leg is always uh, upwind in course racing. Yeah. yeah. So we have a, typically a triangular course. So we go upwind. We do um, a downwind, so back to the um, start line, basically, then back upwind, and then we do a sort of a triangle and finish. Sorry if you can hear the storm going on here. I okay, can hear something. Yeah. Yeah. How many? How many knots was on the on the course? Here, it's probably lucky if it's tipping five knots. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what it looks like. You can see the board is just really stuck in the water here. Um, yeah. And, yeah, it, it's strange, but it's some of the most physical sailing in the low light winds because there's nothing holding you up. And you, you can see from my arms here, they're, they're really bent. You're trying to hold the rig as close to you as you can to keep it as upright yeah. as possible. So you, your body's contorted and, yeah, there's, there's nothing holding you up. So we're starting to get a bit of a gust here, Paul. Let's see it coming. Yeah, you're actually, I was saying, you're actually moving pretty good for such light winds. That's it. And that's yeah one of my advantages because I am a lighter sailor. That I, you can the lighter stuff yeah. I do get going. Are you standing in front of the mast base, or is that just a video distortion? I may well be uh, yeah, well, trying to get as far forward as possible to get the back of the board out of the water. Yeah. That's a, a common mistake in light winds. If you're sinking the back of the board, it's very slow. The other thing you'll notice, too, is the board's kind of leaning. See how the windward rail is out yeah. of the water? That, again... There's, there's less board in the water, so it's it's yeah. faster in lighter winds. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's kind of what I'm going for there. All right, we'll yeah. scoot on in here. And in this light wind, uh, do you even use your harness at all? Uh, I don't think I use my harness this entire race. Yeah, so that obviously yeah. makes it more physical as well. It does, yeah, for sure. This is my attack onto the lay line here. So as you saw from the start, I was kind of a third of the way up the fleet at the start. Uh, by the time we get to the top mark here, we've got, uh, I'll try and count them. I think I'm sixth around this top mark out of 35. So we've done okay hmm. out of it from such a bad start. And the sail, I mean, may be obvious, but you've basically rigged it to be as bagged out as possibly gets, is it? No, no, not oh. not actually. Um, I used to sail like that in, in light winds, and it actually works better for me to have a lot of outhaul on uh, because of, again, my, my weight, my lightness. So you'll see here that the... Sail isn't ever touching the boom on the other side there. So I've got it on pretty tight. Uh, that helps me point 
And yeah. because I'm lighter, it, it's, um, I get going a little bit earlier than everyone else anyway. So I can afford to sort of lose a bit of bagginess out of the sale. It also, unlike other sales, Salem sales, we pull the, the, um, the downhole down to get your mast bend. In the, the windsurfers, you kind of, your outhaul kind of is where you get your mast bend from. So if you have it all bagged out, you, you're not going to have much uh, leech twisting off in the light stuff, which you kind of want as well. So, but that's, yeah. that's what works for me. Um, yeah. Well, not saying that that would work for a heavier sailor. Yeah. So here you're allowed to pump. That's right. So we've gone around the top mark. We're, we're heading downwind now. And we, we actually go as fast as the wind downwind. And you can see how important pumping technique is. Um, I sort of am chasing down this sailor here. So you, you can pump until you get to the, the downward marker and then you turn around that and you go stop pumping? Correct. Yeah. But what's, what's the technical rule? At what point... Like, you know, you, you reach the mark or when you actually have gone around 180 degrees or what's the, is there a rule that says when you go to stop? Uh, essentially, when you go past across the wind, if you could imagine a, yeah, yeah just a, a, okay. a very, a beam reach or, or what have you, where you are across the wind. As soon as you, you yeah. start heading a degree into the wind, then you can't be pumping. Uh, okay, okay. But, yeah, if you don't pump in these downwind legs, you, you get left behind for sure. And it's also a good way to, to make up places. So, Yeah, and obviously the centre board is fully up at this point. Again, no. No, I think you'll find it's fully down. Oh, it's fully down, is that? Going <laughs> which, down which, well, no, normally you don't, but in ultralight stuff, uh, it pays to have it down. You can see while I'm pumping there, I'm kind of rocking the board as well. And by having this, the center plate down, you're kind of generating lift yeah. as the board rocks from side to side. So this is so why very... I'm racing because I've got to dead <laughs> last. I'll be, do I'll be doing everything exactly the opposite of what you should be. <laughs> very counterintuitive the way I sail. Yeah, it's a weird one, isn't it? But you're right, I guess in light winds, because when I used it in those 20 knot days, obviously if you have that centre board down, it creates just way yeah. too much lift. But in light wind, yeah, you kind of want the lift, I guess. Exactly. As, that, as soon as you're yeah, able to get into the harness, yes. that's right, as soon as you're able to get into the harness, there's more than enough wind to start kicking the centre board up downwind. Mm. Okay, so here's the bottom mark. So from this point... Can't pump. Oh, sorry, man. It's a bit of a delay. <laughs> sorry, you go. I, so uh, I can't pump now because I'm heading back upwind. Yeah. What I was going to say was, when have you done some experiments where, you know, you've gone downwind and actually measured your your speed with, you know, say you put board down, board up and all this to, to, to verify your, you know, your thoughts on it? I should so, do that. Yeah, that's a that's a really good idea. Um, and you know, the official speed app of LTTV, the water speed app, um, would would allow me to do that, for sure. So, uh, I will do that. There we go. And then by this point, the wind had gone so far around to the left left hand side that it was pretty much one and done. So, what that means is. One tack, and you can make the mark. Yeah, yeah. So from here, it's really just about maximizing speed. I know it sounds funny, maximizing speed when you're doing three knots, but um, that's yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, really key. And how we do that is again leaning the board. You can see that there's air underneath the, this rail here. Yeah. Um, getting the back of the board out of the water. Keeping the rig still as well. Um, yeah, that's me trying to keep the rig still, like in a boat, and keeping the mast as upright as possible. Yeah. Again, bending the arms and bringing the rig in kind of over the top of myself. And you can see here we've hooked into a nice little breeze here. 
or just uh, tracking along. Do you have um, do you use a fresher sail for racing and a and a more used one for just general sailing, or is that the general idea? I I just have the one sail, and it's actually yep. um, three seasons old now, so it's it's uh, well past its prime. Uh, we'll be getting a new one for this season, but um, in when I once I do, I'll probably keep this one for a training sail. I guess I'll still use the other one in in the club races and whatnot and regattas. Yeah, because I did notice that in Perth when I went to the Worlds, obviously people were pretty, you know, keen on getting a fresh sail, weren't they? Yeah, I notice. Yeah, in a, in a one design yeah. class where everyone has the same boom, the same mast, the same sail, the same board, the same centre board, same everything, uh, then a new sail can give you a bit of an advantage. Mm. I tell you what's been a great thing for this LT class is not only is obviously the board lighter and uh, improved design, but a massive difference is that boom, isn't it? Because I remember when when I was learning, you know, you'd have the you do the old rope twirl around the the mast and, and yeah. bring the. Um, you're probably too. Yeah, do you, would you even remember that? No, I had Maybe. one. It had a, a Coca Cola oh. sail. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's boom. My- and then you were like. If you could actually make them so they just didn't move a little bit, it was just a massive victory. It was like, oh, but of course, over you know, after an hour when the rope got wet and things you know wore out, you get this. But just that sure. clamp on modern clamp on boom is just such a such a upgrade on this whole rig. No, oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And uh, the centerboard too. That goes without saying. If you if you had one of the old ones, you you literally had to pull it out by hand and if you're going downwind you have to hang it over your shoulder oh it's amazing does this retract here we have, here we have a pumping battle eh? yes and i'm up against this little champion really top lightweight junior sailor okay um so he's got he's got a tiny bit more speed yeah he, he wins out for sure yeah i don't get past him but uh yeah, exactly. That's maybe a really good example maybe. of what pumping looks like. Maybe he's got his center board up. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's the difference. You're right. Yeah. So obviously in this light wind, light weights is an advantage, which may be obvious. It is. It is. Yeah. If everyone's on the same gear, uh, if you're and you're 20 kilos lighter than the uh, your competition it makes a big difference but that said we race in weight divisions which i notice is, is something that uh, you're adopted as well with the yep the oh, wave okay. rally world championship uh, book i think it makes sense yeah so so for example in this regatta was there weight divisions there was uh, so there's basically always weight divisions in, LT regatta. in regattas yeah club sailing nice. we we don't okay but look at this, you're really moving now. Yeah, we're getting Yeah, for the amount of wind that's here, it's not very much. We're, we're moving it's some that LT though. I mean, there's just no hope of windsurfing anything small and wind. And here you are bailing yeah. around. That's what's that's the beauty of it, isn't it? Like that's still stand up paddleboard weather. <laughs> exactly. And we're fanging around. And this- yeah, that's what I was saying, actually, why I like the light winds too. It's the lack of chop is so nice. It's so relaxing. For sure. Let me just speed this up because it's pretty much steady as she goes there, trying not to fall in. Here's the bottom mark. The last mark before the finish. Cut it nice and fine. <laughs> yeah, I noticed that. That was a good job. <laughs> and then it's just a, a pump to the finish, basically. Oh, so you can pump at this point because you're still you're going across the wind a bit. Right? Still going cross wind, exactly. Mm-hmm. So I think that was a sixth, that one, a fifth or a sixth. Oh, okay. Out of how many? Out of 35. That's pretty good. 
Yeah, considering the start that we got too. Yeah. But again, it, it the weight makes a big difference. Yeah. That's well, a good setup. They got the boat there and Yeah. Nice nice for them, nice and relaxing day for them on the boat. For sure. Well done. So how many of these races would you have on a day like that? So we had five races on 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 the day and yeah we had a marathon on the second day so that was uh, a longer race that yeah it's usually about two to three hours yeah yeah that's cool it's it's it looks super fun and i'm sure after the racing you guys all get together and you know share some stories and you know absolutely yeah how's the young people going you mentioned in that race there was the young guy there like what's yeah, you know, there was. A, I remember at the Worlds, there was a bit of talk, you know, because obviously there was two hundred and fifty odd um, sailors there, and most of them were above thirty or you know that kind of age brackets. You're being generous. But, um, yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. Most, of them. <laughs> but uh, obviously, you know, the young crew. Like, what's uh, you know what's happening there? Is there any you know any progress in in encouraging the young, the younger guys and girls into it or? What's happening? Oh, look, it's always a focus of the um, the organisation, and we would love for there to be lots more juniors there. There's um, prizes, obviously. There's like a youth division, but there's also um, prizes where the top male and female youth, I think, get their expenses paid to the world championships, which was pretty hefty. Um, our good mate Nick Bez came up with that. And um, so that's been really good. So we're always trying to attract uh, younger people into racing. Uh, the reality is a lot of them race multiple boats and, and things at the same time in that age group. The ones that are, are really good competitive sailors. Um, that said, uh, Gray Morris, who just won silver for Australia, he, he was on the LT five years ago in the Nationals. Mm, um yeah the that guy i was racing against there he's uh also on the iq foils so Mm. yeah it's kind of getting them in and and for some of them they'll just join in at the nationals just for a bit of fun yeah 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 no because i I just i see the i just i just i love the appeal of just you know you can race it in any wind no because obviously the foiling is is good but you still need some wind you know to get the things going whereas this is uh it's so easy to uh you know to, to get going. so it's yeah that's no, cool. Uh, cool after watching it i really want to um i have to join in unfortunately like i said being in geraldton um there's not a regatta that happens there at this point however um hopefully one day one day there is we had um so sidetracking a bit, but you probably saw the video I did with Spotty, you know, the LT. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. And that was, yeah, that was cool. It was um, sort of, he was showing what, what it's capable of in, in those conditions. But um, yeah, I, I, look, I actually think that you could probably even hold a regatta there. It'd be kind of a bit different. But uh, the problem with uh, with Geraldton is just it is a bit of a bit of a trek for most people, you know, to get there, especially if you're not from WA. So it does mean that it's a bit tricky. But um, yeah, anyway, no, I'll keep I'll keep using mine. And actually, you know what I want to do with it as well, Simon, is um, I definitely want to do some overnight multiple day adventures on it. I think that was actually one of the reasons why I was excited getting it because there's all sorts of waterways out there. And I remember you, you drive past it and you think, oh, there's a body of water there and what's on the other side or whatever. And um, yeah, you know, strap a, a waterproof duffel bag to the thing and, you know, just sail off. I definitely, That's- definitely will be doing that stuff. I, I actually, um, yeah, so I'm actually excited to do that as well. All right. Well, yeah, you're always welcome in South Australia if you're passing through. Thanks, mate. Swing yeah, by and say hi. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, thanks. And uh, thanks. Yeah. Sorry, Paul, I'll cut you off again. Just <laughs> delay. No, no, 
It is a little bit of a delay. No, I was going to say um, to everyone listening that um, when I went to the Worlds, I only knew a few. Well, I knew, I knew some of the people there because I'm familiar with them through windsurfing, but I hadn't met Simon before. And Simon took me under his wing and showed me around and educated me on so many things. And uh, you gave me heaps of your time. And it was really, really cool. So thank you, Simon. You're an excellent, excellent ambassador for this LT class. I can see your enthusiasm and the amount of time and effort you put into doing things like this. And um, yeah, it's super cool. It's just super cool to see because I, I do my own thing, you know, with my own YouTube channel. It's not really so much LT. It's just more other things, although I do touch on the LT thing. But I love seeing other people get um, excited about what it is that they're doing because that's essentially how you're going to inspire other people to get involved. So good on you, mate. Spare room, so it's not as good a setup as yours, but uh, it does the job. So good I think stuff, I'm having mate. Silence. awesome, mate. Yeah, absolutely. And um, continue to watch you on your own YouTube channel, Paul Van Bellen, and also windsurfing.tv uh, with Ben Profit. Yeah, good cool. times there. Thanks again. Thanks, everyone, for watching. See you later. See ya.